Hi everyone, it's Bitcoin from The Big Jabowski. This round I'm fighting Princess Sora from the guild Mandalorian Horizon, which was our most recent Territory Wars match. Uh, as you can see here, Princess Sora has an ultimate raid. It's the only uh, ultimate in our group this week. Uh, it seems to be testing out Kara Dune as well in Arena. Not quite sure what that is all about. 248k lifetime score. Um, looks to be very heavy on offense. No surprise there with the Ray, especially in this season. And for the rest, has a in terms of relics, has actually quite a lot of relics over me. So I was a little bit surprised that I got matched up. Something like 10 to 20 relic levels over me, I believe. But uh, the reason turned out to be a lot of missing gear 12 pieces uh, on a lot of their characters. So because of that gap, they managed to get a bunch more relic levels because they actually also have more Zetas than me. But uh, yeah, you can see your Talzin, Spy, etc., Sunfak, Oldaka, lots of them don't have any gear 12 pieces and that GP difference uh, added up enough for them to add a bunch of relic levels on top of me. Now in terms of mods, uh, things are, I believe, not looking too great for them. Take a look here. Yeah, Ray Scavenger here, 260. So definitely got an advantage over there. The Ray is modded for all health and a fair bit of speed. So she's uh, as healthy as he could possibly make her. Uh, and then of course he has Watt here as well, very nicely at Relic 5 and very fast as well. I wonder what his reasoning is behind getting such a fast Watt, if it's for his squad arena to put out more tech quicker, that could be it, uh, I don't quite know. Either way, uh, I don't really have to do elaborate planning for this one because the plan is very simple. He has full cleared me by keeping almost everything for offense and he put his or she I could say considering all the princess stuff going on not saying that guys can't feel like a princess I suppose uh, but yeah he's got this ray team here with a relic 5 l3 and a relic 5 fin and then for the rest he has pretty mediocre teams he put his resistance on defense here with the relics due to a lack of more use for them I suppose uh, but historically most of these teams around Ray would be literally the bottom of their roster, like level 20 Gamorrean Guard and things like that, uh, which is kind of a screw you, I have Ray strategy, and just keeping everything for offense. Now, there was someone who pointed out to me that this strategy is like to help people still maximize their banners while uh, ensuring that you win. So they would essentially send in one AOE character to pick off a whole team here, and score those extra two banners as some kind of consolation prize for just not being able to clear Ray. And that sounds like some serious mental gymnastics to me. It's the kind of people that try to justify that going into a territory war with 42 people is a perfectly legitimate strategy. Let's not get into that discussion, but uh, yeah, it seems like against me and against some historical opponents, he sets a little bit more of a defense, uh, mostly because uh, of some concerns with past uh, attacks. You can see here in my front wall that they took two attempts up against my Darth Revan, did one shot, shot the General Skywalker team. I was actually surprised they already managed to get through this because historically every single time they faced a General Skywalker and Darth Revan team or one or the other, they've like messed it up pretty hard. Um, so yeah, I guess that's why they would historically go so light on defense and so heavy on offense because every single time there was even a slightly fair matchup, they got into trouble big time. Then in this zone over here, the Night Sisters held twice. Everything else was one shot. Uh, didn't really make any changes here. Then in the back, two attempts on my fleet. And it's funny because there was only one reinforcement, the Vulture Droid, which is intentional actually. Uh, start with three tank lineup and then Vulture definitely gets called in and you can pick off some characters. Spy can do the same but that really only works very well if there are already like basically three Geos on the field from my experience. If it's just two of them the chance of one-shotting uh, a ship out becomes a lot lower and like this you can really nicely annoy them especially if they don't have that much experience against the Malevolence. So a fail there as well and then in the back zone there was another fail up against this Emperor Palpatine team. Uh, so basically they failed once in every single zone, which if I'm able to get through the Ray team would provide me with a nice buffer to be able to get through. 
Uh, question is, of course, whether I'll be able to do that. And I can make a whole plan for the front zone, but the plan, like I said, is very simple. I have to beat this array. So I'm going to get to that and just immediately do it. Now, my plan against Ray with the ultimate here is to use my Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Uh, like I said, she's modded for a lot of health, so her ultimate won't hit as hard as it would if she's modded for a lot of offense. So that helps me a little bit. Now, before the launch of Grand Arena this week, I uh, remodded my Supreme Leader Kylo Ren for all health, as you can see here. So he has 184k health, and then with his unique, that makes him end up at roughly 300k health. So he's actually able to tank race ultimates very nicely. Still has 505 speed. The offense definitely lower at 9.8k. But uh, without the ultimate, he's going to have to do uh, some work. And as the supporting cast of today's show, we are bringing in... Uh, where is my friend Watt? There he is. Uh, Watt and Hermit Yoda. Uh, let me just think. Yep. So why does this team work? Um, it's my first time trying it as well. Let me start by saying that. So if this fails, then this is going to be a very brief Grand Arena where I can try to still get as many points as possible. But that would be the end of it. So like I said, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is able to tank all of those hits. Watt's health tech helps uh, help him regenerate, essentially, so that in between the ultimates and the whirlwinds, he can keep his health topped up. And then Hermit Joda, <clears throat> Hermit Joda can kind of stay alive and uh, for a little bit at least, put the master straining on there to make him a little more durable, help him heal a little bit so that I can get a head start at the start of the fight. Now, my main concern is that L3, because L3 stops me from getting to Finn, Finn can turn meter swap to their Ray and thus uh, drop her health lower a lot quicker because she's going to be using lifeblood twice in a row essentially. And she can already immediately start using her whirlwind uh, and that might cause some issues for me. Also the increased number of turns taken means that I will be, uh, that she will be getting to her ultimate faster, though perhaps it's offset by L3 being there who doesn't take as many turns. So that's sort of the theory behind it. I'm just going to get into the practice. I really hope this is going to work. Uh, I did remod for it. I did all the necessary preparation. So uh, let's give it a go. Now I've heard reports of people lasting through three ultimates. We put the health tech on Supreme Leader Kylo. Some people might wonder why not the uh, Offense, the weapon tech, but the reason is that whenever you reduce your turn meter, uh, you lose health and protection, and that's actually what you don't want here. So now what actually gets to put another piece of tech, because there is no Poe and Finn, so I'm going to speed up Hermit Yoda in this case, so that I can perhaps call an extra assist or get some extra turns. Uh, going to attack Finn here. I'm just going to take my time nice and slow for this one. I'm going to do the AOE here on a stunned character because it allows me to stack my mastery quicker. Still not into the first whirlwind territory, but it's probably about to happen. There it is. Okay, that's Hermit Yoda gone. Uh, this would trigger another whirlwind, so I'm not sure I'd want to do it yet. I don't quite have the mastery or the offense necessary to be able to pick him off. So let's focus on whoever has that mastery right now. Get another stun on Finn here. Okay, she's in her ultimate stance right now. I'm going to do the AOE purely to stack up more mastery. The moment of truth, there it is. Okay, beautiful. Now, I'm stuck behind L3 for a little bit here. And if Ray gets her whirlwind here, that could cause a lot of trouble for me. So let's see how it goes. There it is. So I have to stay near that max health to be able to pull through this one. Okay, uh, keep focus on L3, I think, because she has the... Oh, there she goes. Didn't see that one coming. Okay, let's try and stun Finn. 
and he's dead actually. I'm surprised I'm already hitting this hard considering the fact that uh, I don't have that much, I don't have that many stacks yet. No complaints for me. And they're surviving the second one. Uh, let's just basic, get that double hit in. Oh, so close. And there we go. So much for Ultimate Ray. So this once again for me really confirms how happy I am that I went for Supreme Leader Kylo. Mostly because the mirror matches aren't such a pain. Uh, I'm still able to compete. I lost a couple banners here <clears throat> for taking out this Ray team. But uh, it worked out really nicely. In 5v5 it'll be a different story. Mostly because there are so many possible variations of teams there. Uh, but here it turned out to not really be a problem. So uh, because of that now I just have to clear his remaining teams and then I'm good. So uh, behind this zone I actually do expect junk uh, because he got pretty far against the teams that I had. <clears throat> Sorry my voice is not so great today. Uh, he did still have plenty of stuff to clean up the teams that I had so he probably went pretty light on offense. Uh, but that's quite alright. So what do I want to use against these considering what he still has in the top. Uh, I had to go really heavy on defense, obviously, to try to force him to make mistakes. If I had gone too light, then he would have probably one-shot everything with how much he kept for offense. And then this would be a banner match, so uh, this first fight here was really important for me. But it worked out nicely. So, Night Sisters, I guess I'll just be using my Geos. Uh, that works pretty well. Then again, I just have to keep in mind that Basically, all I have to defeat in terms of strong teams, unless he's going to surprise me here in the back, but I kind of doubt it, is this stuff. So I have stuff like JKR, I have Padme, but I guess I can reserve all of that for this top zone and just uh, go a little lighter here in the bottom. So let's do that. Pretty fun first fight, huh? Quite happy with how it went. Uh, considering that was the first run and I wasn't sure how L3 was going to change things up but especially somewhere in the middle of that fight just picking her off so quickly that was uh, a pretty nice game changer. So I'm going to bring Poggle here reason being that Poggle allows me to ability block a little bit uh, and to actually cleanse and since there are a bunch of stuns on this team that could help me out nicely. So let's use these. Another option rather than Hermit Yoda could have potentially been Geobrute Alpha, for example, to try to uh, make me tank some of the damage early on. Uh, let's, she's just going to dispel, I don't really mind that. So let's ability block, uh, she already did her move as well. Yeah, might as well just ability block her. There we go. Um, I'm just going to focus on Daka straight away. There's not much of a reason to go for anyone else. So let's start with that. Whenever Spirit gets Foresight, if you fight a team like this without a tank, you make sure that you hit her so that she hits less hard. In this case, it's just a gear 11, so it's not a big deal. But the moment she is stronger, it stacks up quite substantially. So just going to throw in the early heal here because I think there might be a chance that I get another shot at a heal. <clears throat> Look at my gear 11 spy there deleting someone. That's not such a common sight for me. So hopefully now I'm able to recover my protection banners by this series of attack. Series of attacks, sorry. And then uh, should be all good. Don't quite want to do the special here because I'm not full just yet. Now I am. Could have maybe added that expose over there. But this one should get the job done. Poggle also has nice stir meter removal because Asajj kind of has that going for her and the Night Sisters too. So it helps to keep that in check a little bit. That's something I like about Geo as an offense. You have a little bit of versatility who you want to bring as a third. Sometimes you've seen me use Sunfax, sometimes it's Geo Soldier, sometimes it's Poggle. Uh, Spy is definitely always in there. But uh, just having that versatility against different kinds of characters that you need to control is really quite neat. Now, a Relic 3 mission, I don't think I've ever fought that, so I'm pretty... Oh my god. Like, you put so many relics into this character, into this obscure character, and then you mother for health. It 
just does not make sense. So she's definitely tanky. Uh, she's still going to hit hard, but if this was an offense modded mission, I'd be uh, really worried right now. So question is, what do I want to do? It's a debuff heavy team. Uh, mission stacks potency. I could send in my Bastilla team to sort of counteract a lot of the stuff that they do and uh, try to pick off mission early on. That's an option, I suppose. I could also send in CLS just to have sort of ultimate control over the battlefield. I think I'll probably end up doing that. Makes a little more sense, I think. Could also send in... Nah, let's keep it simple. That's uh, CLS, this one. There are no feats that I need to pay attention to, I believe, uh, other than once I cleared all the zones, I progress with that one to the next one. So let's take a look here. Of course, I'm going to stun mission first. Uh, could also stun Karth and then sort of take control of mission but uh, I'll probably have to put buff immunity on Zalbar first. So let's do this one just to be safe. Hopefully this one lands. Yes, beautiful. Okay, let's try and also get a stun on Karth. I love this. This is so ridiculously much control. Okay, put up the buffs and then that's Relic 3 mission gone. Now I reduce his turn meter, so hopefully he never gets to take a turn. Chewie, do your thing. Uh, Zalbar's still going to get an AoE off here, but the counters did help me to top off protection. Okay, good. So that was a very brief one. No need for elaborate planning when your opponent counts on one thing. And let's see, did they do the thing? They did the thing. Sort of. Yeah, okay, they did the thing. So this is, I mean, it's, I understand it, uh, wanting to keep more for offense and just completely banking on Ray, but at the same time, it feels like such a cocky strategy uh, and it's not doing them any favors here. So hopefully I'm going to try to get as high banners as I possibly can, uh, maybe make a little bit of a statement to them and then we'll see how things go. All right, let's get into the other front wall. Uh, just going to pick off the strongest team here, really. There are three left that have some kind of strength that I should be mindful of. Uh, I obviously don't want to get stuck behind his Acolyte either, so I should just keep in mind that I want to use something that can uh, handle her over there. But uh, for the rest, I don't really foresee any problems. So I'm thinking about my Padme team at the moment and where I might want to use that. Uh, what I should be most concerned about of what's remaining, so to speak. Uh, definitely don't want to use Padme up against Poe because Poe can dispel all of my protection up. Uh, there's another dispeller here as well. And I don't really want to get in a scenario where I bleed a lot of banners. I'm trying to get as much as possible here, so not going to be doing that one. Uh, more likely would be this one over here that I'll be sending them up against. Uh, but just let me take a look what I have left because I'm not really doing the planning now. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't be mindful of uh, what I have remaining. I guess I can do first order up against the Night Sister team because the plague doesn't really bother them as much. Uh, JKR is another option there though. But I'll have to see. Let me use Padme up against this team for starters and then I can see what exactly I want to do for the rest. So Padme, Jedi Knight, Anakin. Uh, then again, Jedi Knight, Anakin is a really nice one to save for the back to just AoE out one of those teams. Depending on how strong they are, actually, I don't quite remember. I think on, only one of them was actually extremely weak. Uh, how much do these Jawas have? Could he man? Oh wow, one dot mods. These guys haven't seen the light of day in a very long time. That's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I'll handle that one with Jedi Knight Anakin then probably. And I will just do Ahsoka, Padme, and also still have Shaq clones. Where is Ahsoka? I mean, the odds of maxing banners here are kind of low because everyone will likely get hit at one point or another, but uh, that's okay. I'd rather just make this a bit quick. 
So I'm going to start with a protection up because there aren't really any dispels here that I should be particularly worried about. Holdo is going to AOE. So because of that, I can put Retribution up. There she goes. That was very little damage though. Pretty disappointing. Uh, yeah, Kenobi here has already lost some of his protection. Unfortunately, let's focus down her for no particular reason. I have no hard feeling towards Rose because I didn't need to relic her so far, I suppose. Let's try and take her out here. Okay, that AOE there wasn't exactly necessary. Uh, GK is back at full though, so that's pretty good. Very nice evade there. Um, hmm. Let's go for the group attack here. I know that was going to dodge. I was hoping that the extra attack from Ahsoka would help me out though. That's a bit of a pity. Didn't really end up doing anything. So that's one banner lost there. That's okay. Kind of lost it towards the end as well. All right, next up, we are doing the, probably this team here with, I guess, Jedi Knight Revan. If I just directly focus on him, then I should be okay. Um, I can use Treya over here, maybe, to get her with Thrawn. Though there isn't really anything. Yeah, I could stall on Magna Guard, I think. Just let Watt keep healing him up, then pick off Watt as my protection's full, and then max the banners that way. I think that's what I'll end up doing. So over here then I can use my JKR. Or did I say, yeah, first order was an option as well. Though my Kylo Ren amassed here, he's kind of the guy that should AOE out uh, Acolyte. But at the same time, he would be a good team to undersize one of these with, to solo one of these with. So I don't think I should really be doing that. Uh, assuming I use JKR over there then, I still have my Arc and Echo. Uh, I think I'll use Shaq over here then. Yeah, let's start with that. They have good healing, there's no stuns on the team, so that's not really a concern for me. And hopefully if I stall enough in the end, I can uh, keep my focus. So let's start by making sure I dispel zombie. Or straight up kill zombie, I'm totally cool with that as well. Uh, get the assist here and try to get a first kill. I'm going to save the AoE for when she stealths. Uh, who's lowest turn meter here? That would be Echo. That's the second. Actually already the next kill as well. All right. Too, ah, too bad. She lost her health as well there. Didn't have the time to recover. I could have maybe saved it there a little bit, but it was because it was only a gear 10 Acolyte, so that's a little waste of banners there, but Quite all right, nothing to complain about. So this one then, that's JKR. I'm probably going to have a lot left over here still, even though I went reasonably heavy on defense already. Uh, do I need to bring Joe Lee here for any reason? I guess Poe does hit pretty hard. So let's, uh, let's just bring him. Assuming Poe is going to get any chance here to attack. He didn't get stunned, so perhaps. Um, I want to ensure that everyone has tenacity up before the other Poe moves. So I'm going to focus on that first. Yeah, no crits here will probably mean he's going to take a turn. Okay, finally. Actually calling in the Joe Lee assist here to try to top up his protection. Swap this one over, spread the foresight again. And that should make them pretty harmless. Especially if they split up who they attack. Um, let's focus on resistance trooper because he hits harder. These are the little things you want to pay attention to if you're trying to maximize banners is uh, who could cause me my entire team to lose protection without me being able to recover that, at which stage in the fight as well. 
and who could do a lot of vertical damage focused on one person, so to speak, and stop me from recovering that in time. And that's a really big deal. For example, when you use Ray Jedi training, you don't really want them to go all out on one character because BB-8 is a lot better at uh, recovering a little bit of protection on a lot of characters, but not as good at recovering uh, a lot of protection for one character. So little things to keep in mind. Everyone's full here. I'll just call Jolie for good measure. There we go. So then this one, uh, I'll just focus on it next. I know what's in the bottom now. So these two guys are going to solo something. Nest is going to solo something. And then I'll see for the rest, for the last one, what exactly I want to do. So Treya, Nihilus, and Thrawn is going to be the trio here. Uh, these two could probably also undersize something in the other zone, but I'll be fine. I can probably use Wampa as well there. Uh, not against the Ewoks though. Although in 3v3, perhaps. Perhaps. So this one is mostly about isolating Magna Guard. Then focusing down Newt. Uh, the moment he gets out of stealth anyway. So here it would be really tempting to try to fracture Magna Guard, but there is really no need the second I do this. Magna Guard turns into a completely harmless individual. I can just fracture new to prevent the extortion as well during the cooldowns to put it off a little bit. He's just going to come back to life at some point if I kill him before that, that is. Uh, so I could have also ability blocked new tier if I wanted to, to, oh wow, deflect. Uh, let's speed up Newt, because he doesn't really add too much. I want to try to prevent Newt from taking any turns here. But it's probably not going to happen, or at least a turn in which he extorts, let me put it that way. And so far I seem to be on track for that. Cooldown reduced again. Prevent him from speeding up as well. I get the other fracture and now I can Annihilate Newt, so no extra revive. Everyone seems to be full protection. Um, I don't even need to kill Watt here, really. So what I'm going to do is, well, I should speed up the Annihilate. I don't think Magna Guard is going to do a whole lot of harm here. There's a little hit. I should just try to keep track of these and recover them before finishing this off. So let's always focus on that rather than on getting the Annihilate quicker because usually the second you see it you're very tempted to just push that button. Hopefully this next rain will get me to the Annihilate. I mean this is heavy overkill for a team that I'm facing for sure. Uh, no doubt over there. But sometimes that's what your opponent allows you to do. All right, everyone's full. He, it's like funny, he even kept his Grievous for offense. So uh, by keeping as much as he did on offense, he was able to get through. If he would have gone even slightly heavier on defense, he wouldn't have been able to get through me. Ah, we have something different. Now that is nice. That is nice. So what is this starting lineup? That is such a strange fleet. Either it's genius and there's something I don't see here, or it is not genius and they're just trying to do something unpredictable. I have no idea. That should be fun though. All right, let's go to the back here then. Uh, what do we want to send Nest in against? I guess over here, this is going to make most sense. I don't have anything to fear from Tebow over here. Uh, there's no revive, so let's send Nest in against the Let's say the team that's most likely to give me some form of trouble. I mean, I'm talking about trouble here. These are just <laughs> very weak Ewoks. Right, so she's not going to keep her max protection against this, but that should be okay. Unless I can get that uh, yeah, no, it's not happening no matter how I play this one. So let's try and get a stun on Chirpa. 
I could do the AoE days, but I kind of want them to be attacking me a bunch because then I counter. Yeah, I could have maybe gone for Tebow as well there with the initial stun, just so I have another character to uh, focus down. Let's do this one now. Doesn't really matter in which order I do this, I should just autoplay it to be honest. Make it quicker. Some fights aren't worth talking over, I suppose. All right, Jedi Knight Anakin then up against these Jawas. And normally seen with all of the modding he's got going, this should be a one shot and a very brief fight. Maybe I'll wait a couple seconds before I get flagged by some ridiculous system that people have been talking about. Um, I'm wondering if this guy is going to die though. He looks a lot tankier than the other two. Well, let's give it a shot. Yeah, he did survive. For a little bit anyway. All right, then we've got these two left. Let's do Kylo over here. And the other one, I can see, I don't know, something funny. That's Wicked gone. That's Wicked gone. Can I get that special in and recover my protection? Perfect. That's what I was hoping to see. Okay, so what do we have here? Like, if you're going to put these characters on defense, at least put mods on them or something. But I guess that's how confident they are that people aren't going to get through this stuff. And again, I think a fair question is also because I'm sort of bashing this uh, cheap strategy. A question is also, if you were in their position, what would you do? How would you play this in such a way that you'd be able to beat me with the having that ultimate ray? Uh, I think anyone would logically put it on defense, but if your hope is that I don't know about the counter, that I'm not able to get through this team or even multi-shot it, does it make most sense to go as heavy on, def on offense as they did? And I think it actually makes more sense to sort of extend that defense a little bit, to go a bit stronger, because that stretches me very thin. All they have to do to beat me is clear half of my map more efficiently than I clear half of theirs. So if they go heavier on defense, like they put the Ray here, and then in the other zone here, they just set a bunch more strong teams, uh, and then nothing too weak in the back either, then I'm probably only able to get through half of the map as they would be in my case. So it would come down to a banner match. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying all of this is also keeping in mind that this person has inferior mods to me. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If they were in a superior position, they could obviously play this a little different. But uh, that to me is really important. And now it's just like, yeah, aiming for a full clear and not really getting a great score for it. I don't really feel like it makes a whole lot of sense the way they're trying to play it now. It's just a gamble essentially every round whether their opponent knows how to take down that team. Because even if I would have had to two shot it with someone, something other than Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, and I'm not pretending I've done that because I haven't, but uh, if you fight someone who's capable of doing that, they still made four mistakes by keeping everything for offense. So it's just too high of a number of mistakes for how much they're keeping. It doesn't make any sense. Now, enough rambling, I guess. Um, what's a good play here? What's a good play? Who can recover that extra protection banner? Or sort of keep it, I suppose. Uh, one thought that crossed my mind was R2, because with R2 I could stun the main guy. The other shouldn't do any damage that costs me banners and just sort of stun lock him down to death. Uh, doesn't have any significant tenacity, so I think that could actually end up making some sense. The other option is, I suppose, Wampa, because Wampa can immediately do that roar at the start, and that will give me so much bonus protection that... 
uh, shouldn't be able to lose it. Another option is Bastilla as well. Uh, I think she would do a fine job but never losing her protection. So I think out of all the characters, she probably makes most sense here. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but uh, she doesn't need to. because She's just never going to get damaged so much that I lose her protection. So let's send her in. Um, let's buff myself up a little bit. And then start focusing on this guy. In all my time playing this game, I don't think I've ever in a competitive game mode fought Tuscans for any particular reason. I don't think the buffing is really necessary here, it just draws out the fight. Five, that's uh, some spectacular damage over there. I wonder how much time it would take, like if there was no timer on the clock here. No timer on the clock. If there was no timer, how long would it take for this guy to beat me if I couldn't damage him? Because then I also wouldn't have the health steal that I do, I suppose. That would be a pretty fun one to watch. Well, not really to watch, just to see the outcome, I suppose. So that's pretty high. I'm not quite sure where I can end up, but uh, let's go in on this one. I have pretty limited experience against Radus fleets. I think I fought two, maybe three. So it uh, should definitely be an interesting one. Let's try and squeak out as many banners as possible. Um, obviously want to get the kill before they manage to annihilate my capital ship. Uh, this should really do it though. So let's see, if, if they basically, if they make me end up below 66 banners, then I think it was a good play to put this one because that's generally what I tend to get uh, against some of the higher fleets, like the Malevolence, etc. cetera, the Negotiator. This is already some very good damage on me. So in that regard, it's uh, already a pretty good win. AI definitely seems to be programmed well to go after Jedi Knight Anakin here. So that's pretty neat too. Uh, let's put buff immunity on him. Um, I'm thinking I could, even though there aren't any uh, target blocks, I think I could already spec them out here, to be honest. But let's just go with the basic for now. Also kind of nice that you don't have any concerns with the uh, capital ship using any offensive abilities. Make him taunt so that my Jedi Knight Anakin can survive a little longer. Y Wing, that's such a strange combination. Hmm, I wonder, like, generally, I have no idea how smart this player is. I wonder if it's a play on getting Jedi Knight Anakin so low and then calling in the Y Wing who kills him while he's at sort of minimum health. I could actually see that working. So if that was their intention, then I think it's very clever. Uh, if that's just like a funny side benefit, then it's a good learning, I suppose. Let's call in Ahsoka. And hope that she crits. Ahsoka, this is your moment. Yes, she did it. I have it on video as well. So yeah, I went one banner under what I would usually get. So. In that regard, I suppose, a bit of a win for them. 24-79. Okay, that's a pretty sweet score. I was hoping I would get over 24-80, uh, but I'll take this. So that was my match. The ultimate raid didn't work out for them. Um, also curious to hear how all of your matches in 3v3 have been going, if you've been enjoying it or if you hate it. I can imagine you might not be super fond if you face these teams and don't really have an answer for it. but. Uh, so far having a good time with it by uh, doing the necessary preparations and yeah i hope to see you all in the last round i will be up against 
Let's see, this guy over here, what does he have? I think one of them has a Kylo. Let me take a look, because I am already curious. It's not this one. Doesn't mean I'll necessarily fight that one, though. Yeah, it should be this one with the heir apparent title. So that's pretty odd. He puts it on. He puts the General Skywalker on defense in arena, I suppose. Even though he does have Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, so to me that's a sign that he's not really doing his homework, because there are teams that you can set on defense that don't drop that hard. Uh, but yeah, might end up facing this guy who's relatively lower on the GP. Actually, has a little bit less than me, which I don't face all that often. So anyway, that was my round. See you all soon for another video.